if you know how to live with your birds in that way, you will know how to. But we could film a whole entire movie with 10 parrots that have nothing to do with parrots, just have a film crew in here, and they won't make a noise the whole film set because I know what they're gonna do before they do it. Hello, my fellow sniffers, flighters, and hatchlings. My name is Marlene McCohen. Welcome to my channel. This here is Brando, my mustache parakeet, and I always have another bird in the room. So, what up? But they can't see you. Did you hear him, guys? That was Merlin. Oh, Merlin. Who's leaving to up here? This is Merlin. Says, what's up? Changed up my camera a bit. Today, we have a very fun video for you. Go potty. You go potty. Sometimes after they get scared, they go potty. Good bird, by the way. But who's potty trained? Oh. Me or you? Me knowing that you're gonna go or you that you went? Oh. You? It's all about, it's all about being in tune with them. Everything is about being in tune with them. But that is not why you're here today. Today you are here because of the title, Five Ways to Keep Your Birds Quiet. I'm a master at this and I tried to put it into six ways. But before we go on, of course, I want to give some shout outs to my Flighters Club. That's those of you who support me on Patreon. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is them. Today's shout outs are, you want to help me with them? Rosalind Coybion, Janet Weissman, and Glenn Freeland. Don't forget to stay tuned to the end of this video to see if your video of you and your bird or your bird is going to be featured after I chose through the submissions of hashtag pick me Marlene. I love showcasing your birds because I feel like they all deserve to be noticed so people could see how amazing birds are. And if you did use that hashtag, that is essentially a submission to me so that I can put it here on this channel. Remember that guys. Let's get right into it. Right away, off the bat, I want you guys to know that the best way to keep your birds quiet, and this is not part of the list, but the best way is to absolutely be in tune with your birds and give them what they want. I don't mean spoil them because this is a fine line. Sometimes if you just keep giving in to your bird, then they will scream so that they can always get that thing and you may not be able to give it to them. So what I do is I'm kind of aware of when my bird is going to scream and I give them something different that they like before oh that happens. So overall, you really gotta be in tune with your bird and there is a fine line between making them happy and encouraging bad behavior. So when I say that you need to give them what they want, I don't mean if the bird is screaming because it wants you to hold them to always keep holding them. I really mean like, for example, I would know before my bird is going to scream that it's going to be because he wants me to hold him. And if I can't, I would give him something else to do before before the desire becomes too strong. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys, but let's get right into the ways that I use to keep my birds quiet. And I'm kind of proud of this, but most people come into my house and they're kind of shocked by how quiet my birds are. It's pretty impressive. The first and most important thing, honestly guys, is number one, to keep your birds well fed, okay? You see this? This is the little crop right here because Merlin is a plucker. And by the way, he has a rescue story. You guys could go back and watch. You could see that his crop right there is, he just actually ate some pasta. So you could see that it's got a little food in it, but it's not super full. If it was, this bird would not have the energy that he does because they kind of need to sit and digest. They really just chill out and it makes them just less vigilant. You know how you are after you eat a full meal and you're not exactly ready to run around. It's kind of the same for birds. And also if you have baby birds and you just fed them, don't be playing with them, turning them upside down, too many cuddles. Just remember that a well-fed bird, like really, you could see it on Jersey sometimes, just that nice big crop. It just makes for a really chill bird. So be very conscious that you're feeding your bird healthy foods. You can make some chop, you can put it in the fridge, you can pull it out at different times. We're always like making 
great food here. We're always making sure that the birds are well fed. We include them in every single thing that we eat and we cook with them in mind. That is just like one hack that I swear to you guys, if your birds are screaming, it's not just gonna be like, oh, let me give them a nut or let me give them pellets. You really have to give them good, strong, <laughs> nourishing food. Like something, just put them in like a, like a food coma, if you know what I mean. And I don't really, I'm exaggerating, but basically that's kind of what it is. They just really chill out. So if your bird is extra loud, he might be hungry. I like to make sure that birds are well fed in a way that you know that they're eating until they're done. I don't try to decide for them when they're done. I want them to be eating as much as they feel they need. It really makes for a nice quiet bird, especially if you live with them in the main room like I do, cause they're like family members to me, then you want to be able to cohabit it in a very peaceful way. And also on that note of keeping them fed, make sure you're not giving them the wrong foods. If you're giving your birds anything with caffeine in it or sunflower seeds and they're eating a lot of those things or sugar, that is going to make your bird hyperactive and it's also going to make your bird a little bit like stressed and cranky. So that's another thing just to watch out for. Okay, number two. This is all about engagement, but it's also about exhausting them in a way. They're like toddlers. So for example, if I know I have a lot of work to do, I start analyzing my routine and I start saying, okay, mornings, <laughs> breakfast, I'm gonna spend it with the birds. They get extra rambunctious. They're excited to be out. So at that time, then I make sure that we've played together and they've eaten and then they're kind of ready to like rest while I can go do some work. And that's where engagement comes in and becomes really important. So. I let them fly around, they fly to the kitchen, they fly playing with different things, they fly in circles, they fly to different areas, they fly to me, they fly to George, they play with different things, they're busy eating, we dance with them, you know, we make Jersey dance. We just kind of let them be birds in the house with a lot of supervision. By the time this is done, I'm honestly exhausted, but we're clapping for the bird, we're putting on Alexa, we're having Jersey dance. Each bird is really getting a lot of time to be themselves and to like exert all their energy and that coupled with the breakfast that they just got really kind of puts them in a chill mode and for my schedule that's when I go and I kind of work on things and I don't even need to lock them up they could just be on their stands and they're just kind of like tired they have toys there in case they want to do a little destroying of some toys and then we'll hit a certain time when they do get rambunctious again and then I stop what I'm doing and and I do it all over again. And you know, I play with them and I exhaust them, but you have to enjoy it. Like I enjoy playing with birds. It's like my life. Like I love them. I'm crazy about them. Sometimes when they go to bed, I'm like, oh my God, thank God I'm exhausted from the day. But like 10 minutes later, I miss them, you know? Sneak one out as you guys have probably seen on my Instagram. It is a job. I mean, it's gonna be a lot easier if you only have one bird, but it's not gonna be easy because if you've never had any birds, that might be hard as well. But it's something you have to be aware of. Just like toddlers, like they have energy, they like to fly. In the wild, they'd be outside all day foraging and busy doing things. So keep that in mind. Which brings me to number three. Having an outdoor aviary is a really nice thing. Yeah. You know how it is when you go hang out by the pool or the sun all day, you're kind of like tired or chill and you just get relaxed mode. It's the same for birds. I have my outdoor aviary. None of them sleep out there. They're only out there a few hours a day, but they get some nice vitamin D from the sun. If it's too hot, they have the misters and they enjoy, they just enjoy the vibe. We have speaker system up there where we play nice music for them. It's really helpful to have an outdoor aviary because you want birds to be able to get sunlight and experience the wind and the air and watch the other animals. That can be entertaining for them in itself, just like watching squirrels and other birds fly. The birds really do like that. They have to be a little bit vigilant, but not so much because obviously they're protected in the aviary. And of course you cover it with toys and lots of enriching things for them to do. And when you do that, it also tires them out and also may give you a little 
little bit of a break to go in and get some work done. So if you want to incorporate that into your routine, but it does take a little more work for me because I obviously have to go and make sure that all their bowls are refreshed and clean. And that's like a whole nother process that I have to do. And then also bring them snacks out in between all of that, cut up fruits, vegetables, all sorts of other things in between. But it is a nice break from any noise. And especially when the misters go on, if it's a little hot, we're here in Los Angeles, that helps a lot too. They just like chill. It's like, whoa, we're in the rainforest. Honestly, it's pretty good to have that guaranteed time. And I know they like it. Like today, Cody did not want to go outside and I did not make Cody go outside. So, I mean, I leave a lot up to them. I believe in letting birds make decisions, not controlling you, but making decisions that really just like affects their intelligence a lot. It's fascinating. That brings us to number four. <laughs> establishing a routine. When you have a routine like that, and by the way, I don't believe 100% in the routine being so strict that like you can't have a different day where I'm on a movie set and that's not gonna happen for them. Like I do believe in shaking things up and then getting used to it because like you don't want them to succumb to like plucking or something if things change. As routine as we are, we're so not routine, but establishing a little bit of routine in the house is very good for them to understand, oh, this is my nap time. This is my play time. This is my eating time. And if you have a lot of control over that as a whole and being in tune with them helps, you know, helps guide you, then you'll be able to fit in the things that you need to do around entertaining them, hanging out with them. Because again, obviously the first word in engage, not cage is engaging with your birds. So that engagement is very important. But also I believe in being able to cohabit with your birds in a way that if you aren't personally engaging, they don't have to be locked up. Toys, foraging, play stands. If you know how to live with your birds in that way, you will know how to... Oh, we could film a whole entire movie with 10 parrots that have nothing to do with parrots. Just have a film crew in here and they won't make a noise the whole film set because I know what they're going to do before they do it. I can hear one scream of Jersey, like a little sound, and I'm like, oh, that's going to set off this kind of scream. Like, I just know. And if you're in tune like that, then you can stop things before they happen. Birds are beings as well. They get tired, they get exhausted, they get hungry. And believe me, it really does showcase itself similar to like toddler tantrums. You know, scheduling and fitting stuff in is very similar to how like one of those busy can do all moms does things, you know, I see it. So yeah, I believe you have to have the power and knowledge to have your birds outside of the cage, even when you're not engaging with them. Because what I'm learning is that's really a skill for people. And it should be a skill that you want to work on if you have birds. It really is about them being able to live with you in a way that you can have them out more than when you're playing with them. Which brings me to number five. <laughs> have a lot of toys and foraging things for your birds to play with. That is everything from toys to food to foraging materials. A lot of people are extremely scared about creating nesting situations for your bird. If your bird has issues with those kind of things, then that's a different story. But if you have a healthy bird and you see that they're playing with certain things in a certain way and it's keeping them extremely busy, that will one, keep them very, very quiet and also keep them very, very busy. It's foraging. It's what birds do all day in the wild. We want to take away so much from them. We want to take away their wings. We want to say, you can't fly, but not only can you not fly, but you can't nest. So let's take away that because we're human beings and we don't know how to handle in case you were to have egg binding because we took away your flight on, on the flip side. So like, I just believe in trying to work around the bird's natural behaviors. I mean, if your bird has a problem, with certain things, then of course, you know, make sure that your bird is under vet care. But if your bird is a very nice, healthy bird, then yeah, find things for your birds to do that they can engage in. If you find that your bird is destructive, let's say your bird is destructive and destroying something, find something similar to that to entertain your bird with. So it's like, my bird doesn't play with toys, but he destroys my books. Okay, so maybe get out the old telephone book and put it on top of the cage. These are just kind of little ideas. So I always look at what 
it is that they're destroying and I try to find something similar to it to entertain them. That's why I keep a variety of toys around. A lot of people say my bird doesn't play with toys and that may be true. But Leo did not play with toys and now he's starting to play with toys. All because I gave him like the cardboard from the cat scratching toys. It did not have the catnip, but you know what I mean? That got Leo engaged and I was like, oh wow, cardboard really just works with so many birds. It's a really great place to start real cheap. You just hand them a box. Again, if you're worried about nesting, then don't make it in the shape of a box. That kind of thing was really engaging for him. That really kept him quiet. Speaking of another hack. Okay, let's make this number six. I know it says five ways, but number six. <laughs> If you are able to handle your bird in a box and they're not getting too aggressive, I make kind of like tents in the kitchen for Cody and I'm just like, here, hang out in your tent. And then Cody disappears with toys in the tent for literally like four hours and just keeps herself engaged and quiet. She never gets aggressive towards me. Same with Merlin. Merlin guards things. They kind of fight over the same spot. But I created those things because I saw it's what they're reaching for. And so I wanted to give them what I feel like they're naturally looking for. And that will help you a lot with them being quiet. So yes, this is now six ways to keep your birds quiet. I hope those ways help. There's so many other ways to keep your birds quiet. I by no means mean it in a negative way, like birds are loud. I just feel like the more ways you can live in harmony with your parrots, the better it's gonna be for both you and your birds. And I know this can be a complaint and a extreme stressor for a lot of people. And I also know that my birds are extremely quiet, so I'm just starting to analyze what to do to keep them quiet. I want you to let me know in the comments other ways you've used to keep your birds a little bit quieter. It's always nice to, you know, because, you you're talking and it's okay if you're talking because I love that. I love that sound. Yes, I do. Remember, pick your bird responsibly. I love you guys so much. Thank you for doing the work and the research. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. Hashtag pick me Marlene. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also check out my store, parrotstation.com for bird toys, enrichment, merch, the best merch in town. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing means so much to me because it means that we are 200K strong of people that care about engaging and not caging their birds. I love you guys so much. Enjoy this Pick Me Marlene submission. Bye. Let's go shopping. <laughs>